Get excited. What's Trending is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Cougars now 10 and 1 after a 86 54 win against Georgia State. Shep, what were your biggest takeaways from BYU's 32 point win over the Panthers? Yeah, I mean, I expected a blowout. That's exactly what we got. And, you know, like that's, that's basically what we've come to expect in non conference at home, certainly. And quite frankly, it's happened in the neutral side games. <laughs> we, we know the only loss is the only game where it hasn't been like that. Um, so nothing really happened in terms of in from that score or the way the game played out in terms of what I thought. That's exactly what I expected. But, man, there was a lot that happened in this game. And, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, like one of the biggest things that happened was not necessarily a good thing. We hope it's nothing serious. But when Jackson Robinson went down and was hobbling around and had to leave, that was a pretty scary moment, knowing exactly what he has meant to the team. I guess certainly the good news is, and, and Spencer was talking about it on the broadcast, he never actually went into the locker room, kind of just went into the tunnel and was trying to walk things around. Yeah. He always stayed in the huddle, which was certainly a good sign. So you, you hope that it's nothing serious. Um, but honestly, that was one of my biggest takeaways was how, how hurt is that ankle for Jackson Robinson? That, that was really the first thing that I thought of. Rob Ramos, the athletic trainer, longtime athletic trainer with the BYU men's basketball, he did not look overly concerned yeah. in those images we just showed you in yeah. the video. Um, so, yeah, hopefully um, it's just a you know, just slight turn, a little bit of a sprain maybe, because a sprain is a partial tear of ligaments, right? Hopefully he's okay. And listen, if you have to miss a game or two, now's the time. Uh, Bellerman coming in out of the A-Sun. Wyoming coming in out of the Mountain West. Those are two games that at home you feel like, okay, if you don't have Jackson Robinson, you're going to be just fine. Uh, but when you play Cincinnati on January 6th and you go to Baylor on Tuesday, January 9th, you want to be full bore in your leading score and your number one NBA prospect right now yeah. is Jackson Robinson. Uh, so you certainly hope that he is okay. Didn't look like, like I'm no doctor, right, but I play really? on TV. But, um, yeah, I do have a Ph.D. in BYU Sportsology. But if, if BYU is Jackson Robinson, uh, that his ankle looks like, like – that didn't look like a crazy high ankle sprain that would be four to six weeks, and you need the tightrope surgery and the whole day. Didn't look like that kind yeah. of ankle turn, um, in my unprofessional opinion. <laughs> but uh, hopefully he's all right. But it was, it was exciting because we, we saw some stuff like – BYU did what it, what it does. It made threes, 15 made threes. That ties the most this season. BYU's done that thrice. 38 threes is again in the top seven in BYU history. They continue to shoot the three really well. Uh, rebounded well, that's what they do. Um, you know, bench points, incredible. Another 35 spot, which is under their average of 40 and a half. I think that's BYU's superpower when it comes to the Big 12 is they have one of the benches, best benches in the country. They can match up with some of these good teams' second unit. Um, good to see Trevin Nell make a couple shots, by the way. Missed his first three. That was an 0 of 10 streak for him, which is crazy. And then he makes three of his next four. Trevor Nell is tremendous. Of course, Richie Summers. Yes. Of course, uh, Ali Khalifa making a three. It, it was good. There's a lot to break down within this. So we talked about Jackson Robinson's injury. Let's talk about Dawson Baker, yeah. who came in for the first time in a BYU uniform. What do you make of his debut? I had no expectations for Dawson Baker. The only thing I wanted to see is to see him healthy enough that he could see some playing time. So I was, I was fine just seeing him play. Anything that he did was, was gravy to me. And then the fact that he came in and looked really good. And we know what type of player he was. We knew the type of player that BYU was getting with him coming in when he transferred in. And then to see him in limited minutes be able to come out and he scored six points and he looked like he was was in command of what he wanted to do and there was nothing that was bothering him from an injury standpoint. That, to me, was the best news of all. Anything that he gave BYU, to me, was, was not important. But the fact that he did, I, I think it just made the situation even better. Being able to add a player of his caliber basically – halfway through the season or, or a quarter a of the, yeah, third of the way through, mm -hmm. that's, pretty, that's pretty big for a team that is playing as well as BYU is right now. And it's wild because, remember, there's no foos. You almost right. forget. Yeah. And then the, the, the highest ranked recruit on the roster hasn't even played yet in Marcus Adams Jr. Like, th this kid is super talented. Excited to see him play. Perhaps we'll see him Friday. No indication quite yet, but I would guess we're going to see him Friday. We thought we might see him against Georgia State. We did not. Yeah, Baker, uh, Dawson had limited minutes, like you said, nine minutes played. Mark Pope said, yeah, probably a few more minutes than I was anticipating. 
Dustin told Spencer after the game, hey, my foot's a little sore. Mm -hmm. But we saw what he could do. We just yeah. got a taste. Like, you walk by that uh, Costco aisle, they got the little samples of something. Mm -hmm. You're like, I wasn't going to buy that, but I might now. And I think we're all buying like, hey, I want to see a little more Dustin Baker. And we'll get into this in the next couple of days. But the rotation can only be so big. So it'll be interesting to what see what BYU does with this. But, uh, yeah, his, he had one play where you could see his handle a little hezzy, mm -hmm. got into the lane, Atiki on the assist with the little land there. It's like, okay, a little mid-range from Dawson. Uh, he gets to the line a lot. He was top 300 in the country last year in that, 15 a game at UC Irvine. So I'm excited. Uh, and BYU, again, is not the full BYU quite yet. And we may not see the full BYU until March, frankly, because it's going to take a sec for Foose to get back in. We've got Dawson Baker. Uh, getting back into it uh, with the foot injury. And then, of course, Marcus Adams Jr. I'm going to give him like four to six weeks to really get into it. So look at the rotation right now. You've got the starting five, and then you've got kind of the next four and five, and then you got uh, Dawson Baker and Marcus Adams getting into the mix. So you got 12 guys that you're, you want to find minutes for, um, and we'll see how it's this – It's a good problem to have. It's a great problem. My, the, the only con with this is it's going really well. You're going to have to mess with it going a really well a little bit. The hope is that it's all value added. Whoever comes in adds. They don't take away from something. But there is a risk that, eh, so-and-so is affected negatively by a few fewer minutes, fewer shots. Can everyone's ego kind of handle this? I get the sense that this team can, but you will have to go through that in the coming but weeks. But there's already been a precedent set with change in the middle of the season, and BYU essentially not skipping a beat. When you lost Foose and then you inserted Ali Khalifa, BYU continued to win. So there is a precedent set that they've been able to find things. Now, sure, one guy different than three. Yes. Yeah. So, but I, I look, like I said, I think it's a great problem to have. One thing I want to touch on, and you were talking about the bench and how good BYU's bench has We've been. We buried this, the lead here. Yeah. Richie Saunders. Richie Saunders. Richie was Saunders is not getting talked about enough. The, then let's do it. With what he's doing. Coming off a career high, yeah. 20 points. And and how many times have we said that this year? There are a lot of guys mm -hmm. that have had Spencer Johnson, career Fresno highs State, this Jackson year. Jackson Robinson, two or three games this year. Yeah. What Richie does, Rich, first of all, he's a he's an instant energy guy. Mm -hmm. He's he's one of those guys that the opposition, when they see him get on the floor, like, oh no. Who's this dude with that? This this no. <laughs> <laughs> like, we got to deal with this guy because he's he's he'll never quit. Yep. He's 100 miles per hour all the time, yep. and he's skilled on top of it. He can score yes. in many different ways. He can he can hit from the mid range. He can shoot the three. He certainly can drive and put pressure on a defense inside. He finishes well. Yeah. With both he's hands. he. We're not talking enough about Richie Saunders. He does a great job, man. And uh, he got 20 points, new career high. He got that late in the game. They were really pushed for it. He had a couple of open looks. But uh, he's, he's one of a bunch of guys that now have a career high of 20 or more, which brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. BYU's one of three teams in D1 to have nine or more players with career highs of 20-plus points. That's courtesy of Tyson Jacks, BYU's men's basketball director of communications. The idea of any one of you could go off, and a lot of teams say that. They don't actually do it. This team, it happens. Somebody going for 20 on a given night. And, uh, you know, if you had said at the beginning of the year, yeah, hey, uh, this guy, this guy, this guy are all going to go 20 plus, I'd go, wow. That, again, BYU's superpower right now, to me, uh, like shooting a lot of threes is not a superpower. That's just the thing you do. You got to make them. Yep. BYU's making them. Um, number one in makes and takes in the country. That's my favorite stat with all the stats around BYU. Better than net, number four right now. Better than Ken Palm, number five. It's that you take and make a bunch of threes because that's the point of the church gym. <laughs> that is the point of the gym and the churches. If BYU is not going to be number one in that category, what's the point of the, the gym and the churches? It ain't the Christmas dinner, especially when there's only like one side of the table with the food. You got to go double-sided, by the way. Go yeah, yeah, you Go double-sided. Be efficient. Yeah. Uh, Richie Saunders, awesome. And that is good news because guess what? BYU's playing only three games in the next 23 days. What are the pros and cons of that right now? Well, the pro, the biggest pro right now is what we talked about to kind of lead off the segment, talking about Jackson Robinson. It gives Jackson Robinson time, depending on the severity of the ankle injury, to, to hopefully get back to as, as close to 100% as he was before. Yeah. But overall, 
you know, it gives Dawson Baker a chance for more practice time. It gives, and maybe the person that can benefit the most from more practice time is Marcus Adams Jr. Amen. He's he's practiced a couple of times. Yes. So so that is a that is a plus. On the other injury front, three games in 23 days. It, it hopefully gives you a little bit more time for Foose to be closer to being ready, and we, and we don't really know where that stands. I know we're all hoping that he's going to be ready for, you know, we would love for the Cincinnati game, maybe for Baylor, but shortly after conference play, I think everybody hopes he's back, and you can start to see what this team is, at, at what we thought it was going to be from day one. So that's that's the benefit. The The negative is if you're – if you're one of those guys that it's all about momentum and you want to keep playing and when things are going well you don't want to yeah. you don't want to put the brakes on so that's probably the, the biggest con to the whole thing is that you're playing well right now you, you probably want to just keep playing yeah amen uh if BYU could start conference play right now I think it would be better than having to wait uh like they're going to but it's the holidays everyone gears down just to touch there by the way the AP poll is out BYU up a spot to number 17 I thought they might be 15 or 16, but uh, we'll take 17, which is uh, awesome. Okay, the only real outlier here is that Andy Katz has BYU at number three, 33 in the, his top 36. Why does he hate BYU? Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He doesn't hate BYU. BYU's BYU. four in net, five in Ken Palm, 12 in uh, ESPN's Basketball Power Index, or BPI. KPI is the metric used by the committee, 14. Strength of record is 28. AP poll is 17. And then there's Andy Katz, 33. Uh, Andy's what, not impressed. Why? Why does he have a BYU at 33? Now, perhaps. Uh, I, now, the argument against BYU is the following. Okay, yes, I saw the San Diego State win. Nice, but you don't have another top 50 win there, right? NC State, uh, just outside of that, as of Saturday night. I need to look this morning. But uh, Arizona State is kind of top 100. Evansville, you didn't win your one true road game. So maybe he's a, just a little wait and see compared to a lot he of is the, the other outlier. metrics. Yes. And again, that's an opinion poll. The, the two that are opinions are Andy Katz in his top 36, and then the AP poll is 17. But I, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not too riled up about this. Because once BYU gets into Big 12 play, we'll really, really know what we're looking at with BYU. I, I've said I need to see him play nine games in Big 12 before I have a full assessment of what this team is. Right now, I'm very excited about it. Uh, and BYU's done well against the competition it has faced. And it's crazy efficient, and they're blowing out fools. They're 9-2 and two against the spread, by the way. Like, they are covering, and they're playing great and efficient. So it's exciting. There's nothing to not be excited about right now. Hopefully Jackson Robinson's ankle is okay. Yeah, I, I'm not overly, yeah, I'm not, like, you know, hurt or, Bruh. yeah, there's no outrage that he has BYU at number 33. Because <laughs> oh, you no, said, we're not ranked high enough, yeah, yeah. not ranked at all. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, but like you said, his is an opinion. The other things yeah. are more analytical metrics, yes. taking in formulas and whatnot. Yeah. So it's all done in a lab, I believe. There's a lab. There's, there's they, one they lab. Hook them up with <laughs> Bunsen burners and beakers and everything. But, look, where BYU is now, it's a good place to be. Yeah. BYU BYU is going to go into conference play with one loss, and wild. It's it's pretty crazy to think, and and they've they've earned that. They they are not just winning games; they're they're beating teams yeah. badly, and they're they're putting teams away early. And you're going to get people's attention regardless of your opponent if you're doing that consistently. You may do that once or twice, and then you can say, okay, well, that was just once or twice. Yeah. When you're doing it literally every game. Then, then that that means something. That that holds more weight yeah. than just the occasional blowout. So, to to me, uh, I think where BYU is at right now is exactly where they would want to be. Absolutely, it, you know, and and another win would have been good. But yes. Guess well, what? Yes. How picky you want to get? I've moved you know, on. I've moved on. BYU's, I haven't. BYU's I played haven't. in. BYU's played in three close games essentially: San Diego State, NC State, and uh, Utah, of course. So, we'll see what. Obviously, going to Baylor is going to be an abrupt like oh. This is and they just got worked game. by Michigan State. Yes, they really did. Kidding. They were down like work eight at halftime. Work. What in the world? Are, uh, it's a mailbag Monday. You can send in questions about anything about BYU. If they're about sports, we're more likely to uh, answer them. Yeah. But uh, at Lauren J Smith on X, uh, continue to weigh in. He says, when Baker, Adams, Foos, and Robinson all become available, how does that impact rotation? Who gets less playing time? Does it change the game that BYU currently plays? Great question. What do you think? I don't think it changes the way that they play. I still think they are going to try and take and make as many threes. That's just the way that the offense is set. It does with Foose. It does with They with, will yes. dump it into Foose. When Foose is back, that will give you certainly a, a 
an inside presence that you don't currently have from an offensive standpoint in a in a post player. Now you're they'll you're, still run five yes, out cut, yes. which is what they're running a lot with Ali Khalifa because he's unbelievable yeah. at that right now. Like you'll still be able to get points in the paint yeah. from driving yes. things like that. There but but in terms of being able to lob a pass down, have a post player go to work. That's probably the biggest change, and, it, and it's not even really a change because that's kind of how the, the offense started out anyway. You penetrate the ball in a very, yes. various ways, via the pass or uh, off the dribble, right? When, um, you know, BYU, everyone gets healthy. I think Trey Stewart probably plays a little less and Atiki plays a little less. Those are my guess at who sort of has to come in for fewer minutes. So we'll see what that looks like. But again, you got to be effective when you come in. Like, there's no room in this offense for ineffective and inefficient. There's enough people so who are being in, effective yeah, and efficient. Literally yes. everyone is playing well. There's not a player where I'm like, get that guy out of here. They are all playing well, and uh, it's exciting. Dylan Olsen on X. The Dylan Olsen who used to work here as a student? It probably uh, is. Men's Hoops is ranked in the top 25. All the hype about being a projected three seed in the tourney, according to Lenardi. Still have Big 12 play in conference tourney. So is that three seed more fact or fiction to you? It is fact uh, as of this moment. Mm -hmm. If you're telling me, do I think BYU is going to be a three seed on Selection Sunday? I would say no. But because BYU is going to play in the Big 12. If BYU goes 11 and, or what is it in league play? Uh, you know, out of 18. 11 and 7. Like, they, they got a shot at that, but they'd probably be a 5 or a 6, I would guess, at that point. To be a three seed? <laughs> to be a three seed! You probably need to go 13 and 5 in the Big 12. Yeah. And that and that would be amazing. Listen, I'm hoping BYU goes 8 and 12 in league. I, I feel confident that that can happen. Somewhere in the 7 and 11, 11 and 7 range is where I have BYU at the moment. Yeah, I mean, at this point, all you can do is play the teams on your schedule, yeah. let the numbers speak for themselves, try and get as high as you possibly can, and then through the course of the conference season, if you lose some games, again, most of it, if BYU is going to lose games, very few of them are going to be considered bad losses. I don't know that there will be. I, again, I, and that very like, well may be true. Like home to West Virginia or UCF right now or Oklahoma State might qualify as quad three. I'd have to look at it. But it's not going to be. they're going to be quad one yeah. and two. Quad three loss not, is, so a, is as, a bad loss. Get as high as you possibly can, and yeah. with the inevitable slip, when other teams maybe jump you because of maybe more impressive victories – you're you're well, you're still going to be in the in the conversation. BYU is going to have more good wins this year than they've ever had in the history of BYU this year because they have more opportunities. Yeah. There's no at Pacific sitting there where you go, ugh, why? <laughs> it doesn't exist. If BYU loses at West Virginia, we're like, shoot, lost that lost that quad one opportunity, that quad yeah. two opportunity. You make it up. Like yeah. there's plenty of opportunity. Every game is St. Mary's or Gonzaga in the Big Twelve. Almost, almost. It's a new world, game. my friend. Yes, it is. It is a new world.